Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz. My company is Hello from Liz Matthews and I am excited to share this special edition Nashville Needlework Market 2024 new release video with you today. I hope that you are doing well and that you are enjoying all of the sneak peeks that are coming from the community of designers. There are so many good designs coming out. I have been anxiously awaiting this video where I can share with you what I have been working on behind the scenes, getting ready for market. And I'm gonna share six new designs with you today. Normally, I have my mom, Kathy Barrick, who is also a cross-stitch designer, here with me doing new release videos, but I am a little under the weather, not feeling so good, so I told her, stay away, um, keep healthy, especially with market coming up, and hopefully, I'm feeling well enough very soon, and I can have her back on, and we can do a dedicated Kathy Barrick new release video for you very soon. So this video is going to um, also have a newsletter that correlates with it. If you are on my newsletter list already, check your inboxes. If not, there is a link in the description box below, along with details about all of my six new releases. And you can sign up for that newsletter and in it you will not only have um, up close and detailed pictures, but you'll also have called for supply list and any pertinent information. It's really helpful and pairs really well with this video. If there is a design that I share with you today that you are interested in stitching or stashing, no judgment here, you will want to contact your favorite LNS or ONS. They will be happy to take an order and pick up the products from me at Nashville Needlework Market the first weekend in March and then forward those purchases on to you. It is the only way that you can get these designs as of right now. So without further ado, I'm just gonna dive right on into the first of the six new designs. I am pleased to present a buzz at midnight. Now this might look kind of familiar. It was a Hello From Liz Matthews membership exclusive for one month and some members have started stitching this, finished stitching this already, and I have to admit it's one of my all-time favorite pieces I have ever designed. Let me give you a close-up. That fabric, that saturated color palette, oh, it just, it, it ticks all the boxes for me. I love this so much. It is stitched on 36 count sapphire linen from Fiber on a Whim. It is a new color for Fiber on a Whim. It's coming out at market. Your shops are hopefully getting some in stock for you because I have been wanting to put absolutely everything on this really vibrant blue linen. I think it is so gorgeous. It's of course available in all accounts, but oh, this this piece, I just love it. This was model stitched by Bridget the Museum Stitcher. Hopefully you're following her here on YouTube. And I am just, hmm, I love this so much. I can't say enough about it. I hate, I hate like, you know, tuning my own horn, but oh, it's really good. It turned out so much more beautifully stitched up than I even imagined that it would. And I hope that you love it. Now, if the blue fabric is not your thing, or if you don't enjoy stitching on darker color fabric or oversaturated colors, you can of course switch this for a neutral. It will be just as lovely, but this is just a really great way to kick off spring and to bring a little nature and some florals into your home. And this to me looks like a very fun stitch. So I didn't get to stitch this one, but I would definitely love to get some needles going on it. I hope that you love this. Now this model is stitched with needle point silk, but of course, along with every design I ever release, there will be a thoughtful DMC conversion so you can stitch it and stash it and kit it that's the word I'm looking for, whatever products you'd like. But this is a buzz at midnight and I'm really happy to share it with you. The stitch count, let me tell you that. I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cold brain, so uh, I might leave some things out here. I'm looking at the newsletter, by the way, if you see me looking down, that's what I'm referencing. It is 129 wide by 125 stitches high. 
And I think those are all of the details that you need to know right now. Again, if you want to get that newsletter, go ahead and drop the description box of the video down and sign up there. The frame was custom made at Michael's on a 70% off sale. Make sure you catch those, but I thought it paired perfectly with this stitched piece. Next up, we have Cottontail. This might look familiar if you are part of the Hello from Liz Matthews membership. This was a monthly exclusive pattern last year, and now I am happy to bring it to the market generally. I have stitched or had stitched Cottontail in two different color palettes. It is the exact same pattern, and I just love how different threads give these finished pieces entirely different looks. Let me give you an up close, and then we'll chat about both of these. This is a version that I often refer to as the vibrant version just because of the oversaturated threads and fabric. And this is something that I refer to as a more neutral version or oftentimes I call it the indigo version because it is stitched in a beautiful palette of blue tones. Now, keeping with this little pillow, are you dying over this? This is so sweet. This is model stitched by Kia of Kia B on 56 count fabric. That's right, 56. Look at those beautiful stitches filling in the bunny's body, like perfect, perfect, tiny little stitches. I absolutely love this. Now, my taste does lean more towards this indigo palette, the blues. I love blues. Blue is my favorite color. And I love the combination of the seven shades of blue that are used in this. This blue version is stitched in DMC threads and is on 56 count. Um, one more reproduction linen by B Stitch Me Fabric. Isn't it so sweet? I just have to show you again. I trimmed this in Lady Dot, uh, Lady Dot Create Chenille Trim in the color navy. Finished it as a little pillow and like, here's my hand for size comparison. It is the sweetest. I just love this. And you have the option to stitch this color variation. Both color variations are listed on the thread list or a vibrant color option. Check this out. This is so festive and fun for spring and I also just love the jewel tones that you find in here. There's a lot of pinks and purples and a gold tone which typically isn't a hello from Liz Matthews color palette but I love how this came together. All of the threads sit on top of malachite linen which is another new release from Fiber on a Whim for market. Again, hopefully your favorite shops picked up some of this fabric because you are going to want it. And I just love how it makes the threads pop. It was a joy to stitch on and I just love how he turned out. Of course, you have um, long straight stitches for his whiskers. He has no eyes. He's just a sweet, sweet little bunny. And the remainder of the piece is all stitched with cross stitches. The details on this, it is 83 stitches wide by 130 stitches high. Again, both color variations do use DMC thread and you get the thread list for both options included in the chart pack. This is another custom made frame by Michaels. I think it, it just goes perfectly with the piece. And I love how there is an unfinished border. Now, I originally thought of finishing uh, either one of these pieces as one of the stand-ups, the stuffed stand-ups, but I um, didn't have the confidence required to give it a go on such a beautiful finished piece. So think about that. If you have ever done a stand-up and you stitch cottontail, that might be a really beautiful way to finish it. I think that's all that I needed to share with you about this, but I hope that you like and let me know which one is your favorite. I'm so curious. You can't go wrong either way. This is Cottontail. Now, it wouldn't be a Hello from Liz Matthews release if I didn't include some sort of sampler or historic needlework piece in the release. So this is a set of patterns. It is the Remember Me sampler and tree. You get the pattern for both of these designs in the chart pack, 
and I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about these historical pieces. Let's start with the tree. It is finished just like any other Hello from Liz Matthews tree you've seen over the past couple years. This is an antique flower frog and I make the base myself um, or the form. The I make the form myself, I should say. This piece was originally designed for the Delaware Valley Historic Sampler Guild, and because of that, it features animals that are found in the Delaware Valley, which also happens to be my neck of the woods, as well as motifs from samplers that were originally stitched from the area as well. So there's a lot of historic and um, kind of sentimental meaning behind this piece and as you can see it says with this you see remember me that is a traditional sampler verse let me show you deer butterfly squirrel fox all very common animals to this area the border as well as the butterflies are all little motifs similar to those found on historically stitched samplers. So I wanted to include those in this piece for the guild. Now, since I loved this piece so much, I decided to expand it a bit for the general release. And we have the Remember Me sampler. This sampler has a lot in common with the tree. You can see it has the same rolling hills, the same animals, the same historic sampler motifs in it, but it's just finished in a more traditional format. I kept that border going all the way around and it is just lovely. This was model stitched by Rindy Richards and both versions use needlepoint silk thread, of course, I don't need to say it, I don't think. There's a thoughtful DMC conversion. Let me pull up the details here for you. The sampler stitch count is 114 stitches wide by 102 stitches high, while the tree is 108 stitches wide by 155 high. So choose whichever one you like most. The sampler is stitched on 36 count moonstone fabric from Fiber on a Whim. This is also new for market. And the tree is stitched on 36 count vintage country mocha linen. Details are in the newsletter if you would like to get even more. I believe that is all that you need to know about the Remember Me tree. The sampler is framed in a custom Michaels frame. It's basically where I get all of my frames. I wait for the sale to hit and then I order up some custom frames. I just happen to love this one so much. I've in fact used it in another piece that you will see in this release today. But this is the Remember Me sampler entry. Next up is the piece I am most excited to share with you today. It is brand new, no one has ever seen it aside from the model stitcher, and I can't wait to share with you Spring House. This was inspired, of course, by the Pumpkin House, which was released last year, and it features a scene that is stitched on two different pieces of fabric, then finished as one piece. Let me give you a close up and then we will chat about this. I have lots of things I wanna mention. Oh, like plot me right here. I want this to be my spring house. I love it so much. There is of course the pink striped house with the greenhouse attached. Each window has a blooming flower inside along with French lace curtains. The French lace curtains are made with both straight stitches and French knots. I love them. Have you seen the images of old French houses that have that really detailed curtain? Well, that's what I was going for with this. If those type of stitches aren't your thing, that's no problem. Skip that or adapt it to be a finish and a stitch that you like. I just happen to love that detail so much. In the greenhouse, you have some wisteria growing, which might not actually be inside a greenhouse, but there are also some yellow flowers, just plants blooming and bursting, ready to be transplanted into the garden in summer. Oh, I just love this piece. The bold florals from the pot that is on top of the roof, I love so much. I also included a, a 
splattering, a splattering. A little, a little rainstorm is happening on one side of the fabric. Can you see all of the raindrops coming down onto the roof of the greenhouse? Oh, I love it so much. Now, greenhouses is a theme that I've seen throughout several designers' Nashville releases this year, and I am here for it. I love a greenhouse. I dream of having a greenhouse one day, so I had to incorporate it in this beautiful scene that I have here. There's a bee skep on this side, some butterflies on the other side of the house where the storm has passed. You have a garden full of plants bursting from the ground, ready for spring. There's a happy rabbit down there and a white picket fence. Now, this was a really, really fun piece for me to design. I tend to be like a very I guess you could say logical designer. Things have to make sense. Like there wouldn't be a rainstorm on one side of the house and not the other, right? Like that doesn't make sense, but I let that go and I just let my designing go wild and I had so much fun with this piece. I really, really did. There's, you know, mismatched proportions and I don't care. I just love this piece. Now, like the pumpkin house that I did last year, this piece does have two different pieces of fabric. In this case, I used two pieces of 36 count fabric by Fiber on a Whim. The top is Night Sky and the bottom is Cypress, which is one of my all time favorite fabrics Ever. And I invite you to try the same thing. Use two different pieces of fabric if you like. What is important, dare I say imperative, is that you make sure the fabric be the same count for the top and the bottom so that your two pieces of fabric align properly with your stitches when you are putting them together. They don't necessarily have to be the same dyer. I like doing that, um, like double insurance, but they do certainly have to be the same size count fabric. This piece uses straight stitches, cross stitches, and French knots. I've already gone over that and told you a little bit of a cold brain here. And it uses DMC to stitch. This piece has probably the longest list of threads I have ever designed with. I want to say it's like close to 20 different thread colors. So I was sure to leave it at DMC so that it was very affordable and uh, budget friendly. But what do you think? Do you love this piece? I, I absolutely do. I also think you could very easily stitch this bottom portion and finish it as a drum for a super, super sweet spring themed pin drum. You could also easily just do the top, the house portion, and have a beautiful finish there. This piece is very versatile, is what I'm trying to <laughs> get across. And I hope that you love it as much as I not only loved designing it, but love the finish. This was model stitched by Chris Canada in record time. And I definitely like did a happy dance when this came back in the mail. So beautiful. And I'm really, really, really happy to present it to you. One thing I did do differently that I plan on going over in a future dedicated video is rather than sewing my top piece of fabric to the bottom once I did all my cross stitching, I actually finished this on two separate pieces of foam core for framing and then put them together tightly in the frame so that there is no gap in the middle. And it's just an alternative to the way I finished Pumpkin House, which was by stitching the two pieces together. And we're gonna talk about that later in, in that separate video, like I said, and hopefully you find a method that you like. But let's look at it one more time because it's a beaut, I do have to say, and I am so excited for you to see Spring Garden. I hope that you love it. The fifth new design coming to you for Nashville Needlework Market is the 10th day of Christmas. Now this needs some explanation because the 10th day of Christmas is the 10th in the series of Hello from Liz Matthews designs that go along with the carol that you have heard and probably had stuck in your head before. On the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 10 lords leaving. 
I struggled with this, to be honest. 10 Lords of Leaping did not inspire me. It did not paint pictures in my head. It, it was not working. So this is another piece for which I took some um, artistic liberties and really transformed this into something I absolutely love. So let's talk about that with the sampler. Let's start with the sampler and then we will get to the tree. You do get both patterns in the same chart pack as always. And because Lords of Leaping was not was not working for me, I decided to use the top, the ultimate, <laughs> the most infamous Lord of Christmas, Santa Claus, as my muse. So we have Santa Claus leaping over a village, holding a sign that says Merry Christmas as his sack of presents overflows to the village below. Um, I have so much I want to tell you about this piece. First of all, this uses the palette of needlepoint silk threads or DMC threads that you have already been acquiring if you have stitched the first nine days of Christmas. No new colors were added with the exception a Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid in Silver because falling out of Santa's sack of presents, I also wanted to include some Christmas magic, which is represented by the metallic threads that you see around here. And they are just scattered throughout amongst the presents. And I think it just adds the sweetest extra shiny glittery touch. I also was sure to pull in little motifs from the first nine days that have already been released, like the cardinals and a few other little details to kind of tie everything together. One major thing that I need to address is the fabric for this piece. At the beginning of the series, 12 Days of Christmas, I committed to using fog linen from Picture This Plus to stitch all days of Christmas on. However, it is not the correct fabric color choice for this piece. And let me explain why. There is a blurb all about this on the chart should you pick, choose to pick this up called designer notes. So if you don't remember this, don't worry, it will be on the chart. Now this piece calls for a lot of white stitching. You have white stitching in Santa's Merry Christmas banner as well as in the trim for his outfit, his suit. <laughs> and that white stitching does not have enough contrast to the fog colored linen that I stitched this on. So because of that, I used one strand of gray thread to do a straight stitch outline around those white sections of stitching. However, that is not charted because it is my hope that if you choose to stitch this, you will choose a higher contrasting piece of fabric. So look again with that knowledge and you can see that there is just the slightest little outline in those places. And it's because I wanted it to stand out. I wanted you to be able to clearly see Santa's banner and the um, like fur trim on his suit. But again, that's not charted and it's not um, intended to be stitched unless you happen to be stitching all 12 of your samplers on one piece of fog linen, which is why I committed to doing that in the first place. However, if you're stitching this independently, then I do suggest choosing a more contrasted piece of fabric. Now, there were no issues with that for the tree because you can see I used my new favorite blue colored linen from Fiber on a Whim. It is called Sapphire again, and we have an adaptation of the sampler done in more triangular tree shape. And let me give you a look-see at that. We have Santa leaping and we have some more of the pine trees both at the top of the tree and down here on the side a little forest. I see that as a little forest. We have his overflowing sack with the metallic thread, the Christmas magic spilling out over the village and I, I love it. I just love it. I hope that you do too. I think this is fun and this is festive and 
it's an artistic spin on Lords of Leaping. I hope that you um, really enjoy it. I think this could very easily be stitched independently of this series if you are not someone who is interested in the 12 Days of Christmas series, but this speaks to you stitch it up. It does not need the other days to make it beautiful and I hope that you very much love this because I loved stitching these for you. This as always is, um, when I say this, I mean the sampler as always is stitched on 40 count fog linen from Picture This Plus. It uses needlepoint silk thread and it is 97 stitches wide by 132 stitches tall. Can you tell that I have done 10 of these so far? <laughs> um, no new colors were added to the needlepoint silk color palette and of course there is a DMC conversion which I used in stitching the tree. I did that two over two on 36 count sapphire fabric from Fiber on a Whim. Uh, both of these pieces did use that metallic thread which was really fun. It's something I did as a final step and I call it like my sweet reward stitching. I always consider back stitching and metallic thread stitching my sweet reward. So the stitch count on the tree, if you would like it, is 135 stitches wide by 163 stitches high. And again, all of those notes and details that I chatted with you about today will be on the back of the chart if you pick it up. Okay. That leaves us with one more. The final new release from Hello from Liz Matthews for Market 2024 is a pattern pack called You've Got the Love. You get two patterns in this chart pack. One I refer to as the heart shape pattern and one is the love pattern. It's this love text you see here um, in, the bottom, in, in the bottom of my hand. And I think these are just the sweetest. I envision children's rooms. I envision Valentine's. I envision so many different things for these monochromatic stitches. Let's start with the kind of sampler version, if you will. This is finished in a prefab eight by eight frame that I picked up at Michael's. It is a monochromatic piece. It is stitched with Weeks Dye Works Sanguine Thread on um, Ozark fabric by Color and Cotton. It is that baby blue, that like vibrant blue back there. And let me give you a close up. As you can see, the heart shape is spelled out with the word love, 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 repeating all the way through with a little heart motif. And I think it is just the sweetest. Now, I also had this model stitched by Jill Mollard as a little, um, pillow. Now I did the pillow finishing for this and it was tricky to be honest. It's not my finest work, but I think the finish is just adorable. Now to do this, I had Jill stitch the love heart shape text on sanguine fabric from, from Weeks Dye Works using dove thread. And I think it turned out so sweetly. Again, my finishing, it leaves a little to be desired and I probably should have watched some tutorials before I went for it, but not really my style. But I do encourage you to do that if you'd like to have a similar finish. I think this is so darn cute and it is the exact same pattern to get either one of these finishes. You will see that I kept with a pink blue tone to also create the love little pillow here. This text is so sweet. It has the bottom of an arrow, kind of the feathered end, and then at the other end, we have the point of the arrow. It spells out love with a little heart-shaped O, and I think it is adorable. If you kind of use your imagination and think of all of the different color palettes you could use to stitch this, I think you have a really versatile piece. Like you could do wedding colors for someone that you know who might be tying the knot. You could do black and white for a more masculine look, a farmhouse look, so many things. So I hope that you love this little set that includes both the charting for the love 
and the love heart shaped finish so so sweet now for both of these little pillows that are stitched on the sanguine linen using dove thread i use lady dot creates chenille trim in rainy this is so darn cute i just love it let me give you the details for both of these patterns let's start with the heart this is 104 stitches wide by 91 stitches high i've already gone over the fabric options with you again choose whatever you like best while the love little mini pillow measures 107 stitches wide by 52 stitches high and again they are both included in the chart pack this was the very first membership monthly exclusive for hello from liz matthews and i am very happy to bring it to the market as a general release now a year later that's it my friends that is everything i hope that amongst those six new designs there was something that really spoke to you if so contact your favorite shops they will be glad to take care of you i cannot wait to see you all start stitching on these new designs and i am already hard at work working on a new set of releases for you but i hope that you loved these i hope that you were enjoying all of the nashville needlework market sneak peeks so good so good i am amongst some real talent and stay tuned because i do want to get mom on here to share her new designs with you talk about real talent you need to see those too so stay tuned we will do that video asap i hope you're doing well talk to you later bye